I'm Chase. And I'm Timothy. And this is Customer Service. All right, take two. Take, take two. Today's going, going so well that we had to redo the intro on the <laughs> podcast already. It's, uh, we had to restart it because my mic was the mic that Bob formerly used, and it was set to... You know, a normal person speaking yeah. <laughs> voice, and then you came back. Yeah, Apache helicopter. I, I can feel it. I can feel it reverberating off the walls and leaning up against. It. Just cuts through the bullshit, bro. It but, cuts uh, through the bullshit. No, it is the bullshit. But but how are we doing? We were saying it's interesting to hear you say this because I felt like by the end of last week, man, what a long fucking week. Like I really did. Yeah. And I felt very validated when four thirty five came around last week, and you're like, man ready to go home like i'm yeah <laughs> i'm done working for the week yeah it was it was a long one i mean it was a good one it was a good week oh it yeah just, fantastic. it was just like a lot going on and then had a lot of stuff come in and had to get stuff online and had to do podcasts and did all sorts of i don't know yeah. just it was like a nonsense week you know it just felt like it was like it was it, we started at 60 and only went up from there rather than kind of a slow ramp yeah. up so it was um it was good to good to have it over with, but at the same time, like I had like stuff planned this weekend, yeah, and then just like never got like I never chilled like I a little bit yesterday, but not enough to like when I came in today, I'm like oof, you know, just wasn't not, enough, not to ready it, to yeah. relight the candle, like I said. Yeah, no, I agree. Today today's definitely been slow. We've we've gotten a lot of stuff done, packed a gang of orders. We got a bunch of product in that I've opened up with Alec, reorganizing the racks, but. It's definitely slow. It's yeah, slow yeah, yeah. Feeling slower today. Well, but. it's and not even that we're anybody's going slow. It's more just like you can tell, like no one's really talking. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone's just, just sort of. I had my little murder podcasts and just mm-hmm. just doing that, man. Yeah, it's just the you know the business as usual. But, What'd you do this weekend? Well, we had uh, I had dinner at one of Gia's friends' houses, mm-hmm. like like there mm-hmm. with their family, which is in interesting new dynamic that you make friends through your yeah. kids you know what yeah. i mean but we've gotten to know this um uh japanese couple who moved here not too long ago yeah. for work and their whole family is from tokyo and they uh gia has been one of best friends with her, uh, their daughter at school yeah and we've just gotten to know them just kicking around and then they started doing the ballet classes because abby's like mm-hmm. helped them get advice on like you know here's some classes or here's some stuff going on that that she could do so they've always they've always gotten involved in all that and mm-hmm. then you know you sit there and you know while they do ballet and you chit chat so we've gotten kind of close over the years like they've come over and hung out at our house and you know yeah, so fun. we were going over to have dinner at their house it was great great cooks they'd like a like a little like skinny steak you know what i mean but with yeah. like uh like some kind of ja- he showed it to me some kind of japanese barbecue sauce and was it gas it was really really good yeah, yeah. you know that's not even my thing and it was i, know, I, yeah. I was into it so it was fun. It was fun to like, you know, get to know them further and everything. Yeah. I always feel bad because uh, his wife doesn't speak English a little bit, teeny tiny bit. But I mean, and I'm not knocking because I don't speak any Japanese, speak Japanese. But yeah. um, but I always feel bad because he has to like translate, you know. But mm-hmm. we got some. I got a couple laughs, you know. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all right. Nice. I had fun. It was. It was. It's. It's an interesting. Like, it's like uh, it, the conversation is interesting in that you don't realize how much you assume everyone is like you until you like get to talk like more in depth with somebody from somebody, you know, from somewhere else. Like, especially Mm -hmm. like, you know, being like, do you guys do anything for Easter? And you're, they're like, you know, no, we don't, we don't really have that in Japan. And, and, uh, it was like, oh yeah. And they're like, it's a religious holiday. Right. And I'm like, it is, but not everyone really does it that way. Yeah. Some do, obviously, yeah. and it's like hard to explain. You know what I mean? Suddenly, uh-huh, where you're uh-huh. like, "Well, then, what do you do it for?" Like, it's it's, it's started know, it's like, in religion, but is so like rooted it's in culture. Yeah, it's like, customary. Yeah. Kinda, you know, for some, it's like it's one of those things where you like you don't realize like some of that stuff that's unusual until you have to like explain it. Yeah. So, uh, so it was fun. It was a, it was a fun conversation. Did that, and then uh, so they went over and played, and then we had that, and then the next day we had to like. I've been doing a lot of spring cleaning. Yeah, yeah, us too. Like man. deep cleaning, like really resetting stuff and trying to get rid of a lot of stuff and just have less things. And you know, we redid Gia's room, try to get her to sleep back in her room again. Yeah, because I, I don't know, obviously the listeners don't know this, but we've been dealing for like a long time where she's sleeping in bed with us. So, been trying to get the get that situated, which has been going okay. And uh, then we had to do like a lot of cleanup because of that, because Abby's been like going through the rooms, but that means like a bunch of stuff ends up in like bins that needs to be donated or thrown Mm -hmm, out or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. And we've just been like putting it off because we were busy. So we had to do a bunch of that. 
so uh, not really anything, dude. I like I took one of my baths, you know, and yep. then I uh, watched a bad movie, and that was pretty much what the was extent. It? I don't even remember what it was. Oh, uh, everyone to watch the new Hunger Games movie. Oh yeah, it sucks. Does it? No, it sucks. Uh, so see, bad. I don't know. There's like I've... way more singing in it that doesn't need to happen. Wait, they sing. I, I at one point early on, I was like, Abby, if they if they're gonna sing this whole time, I can't. We gotta try something else here. I can normally get like I can get in the right mood. It's only on Sundays. Yeah. Uh, that I I'm in the mood on Sundays specifically for like dumb movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just dumb action. Yeah, whatever of course. The hell. Yeah. So that's this is where like, I mean, I've re- started a lot of like. Like Shailene Sunday was one where we watched every single yeah. Shailene Woodley movie. Yeah. It's, Wait, did you watch the, the roughest? Did you watch the GameStop movie. one? Where oh, she's yeah. married to Paul Dano? Yeah. Yeah. I, I watched that a while ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that when it first came out. Oh, nice. It's good. I like he's, he's I really good. like that movie. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. good. It's like a good, like, it's a throwaway movie, if you it's know like what I mean. Like, I don't network, mean it dude. like it's bad. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means like it's like, that's one of those movies that I'll watch and I don't think about it again. Like, I liked it, but mm-hmm. I just. Low stakes it's is fun. how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you fun. don't need to invest too much to watch it. Mm-hmm. Nobody's dying. There's nothing sad it's an or movie. happy. You just yeah. sit there and watch it. It's just, it's just, it's, yeah. it's, it keeps your attention the yeah. whole time well. Yeah, so I watched that. I've seen that one. That was not part of Shailene Sunday because that was started a while ago. Uh-huh. But uh, uh-huh. at the time, we watched everything that was in her filmography. Yeah. It, it, it's largely like things that are under 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, but you know, you get you get in the zone and you just God run through you. them. You know? yeah. I don't mind it. So on a Sunday it's okay. So yeah. we got I got through this one. It was not good. With a lot um, of singing. Let me let me tell you about something. Maybe I've met, I know I've mentioned it to you in real life, maybe not on the pod, but one of the most foul things that my girlfriend in college ever did to me was trick me into going to see like a nighttime showing at the moment of release of Lame Is. And like the one with Anne Hathaway, yeah, mm. singing the whole fucking time, dude. Mm-hmm. I had no clue what it was. Little did I know I was in for a six so and a half hour a, ride of singing. I'm gonna bet there's two things going on. One, how the fuck do you not know that Les Mis is a musical? That seems crazy. You asked that question to me. Yeah, I mean, it just seems crazy that like you hadn't have come across that or heard about it in your life. But number two, when you say tricked, I feel like she told you and you went, okay, and then never looked into it or anything. <laughs> and then dude, uh, I then, honestly then, then decided it was her fault that she didn't walk you through. I what can just it was. remember being there. I, I know the theater it was at. And uh it was over by an old Damon's Bar and Grill that I used to go to with my friend Tyler and his family quite a bit. Shout out Damon's Bar and Grill. Love Damon's Bar and Grill. I think they're still open as a company. Um you know, I wonder about this because when I was a freshman in college, that was technically the restaurant in the basement of my student center. Mm. It was Damon's Bar and Grill freshman year, and then it became Quaker Steak and Lube mm. after that. Which you they know used I to love. throw. They used to throw that Damon's Bar and Grill is like where you could get the worst New York strip you've ever seen in your life. It looks like it was fake, yeah. and then it would have fake parsley on it, like the not real, like decorative parsley, uh-huh. and like nothing else. And then a movie theater that was playing, like you know. Last it had it had college lacrosse, uh, a rerun of a Bourne film. There you go, and then for, some yeah. bullshit on the, uh, some old bullshit. And sports then, then on like the one guy playing like a quiz game on the yeah, on the one, yeah, yeah, like yeah, one yeah, family yeah, yeah. Yeah. getting all the answers wrong on a quiz. He's game. got fucking uh, marinara sauce all up and yeah. down his fucking his high ste- school polo. steak fries. You know what I'm talking about? Those I know what you're talking you, about, bro. Oh god, that's the worst potato preparation. There's is like is like a Damon style steak fry. <laughs> you know the Damon's fries were not good, but there is it might be Applebee's. Somebody had a good steak fry, and I'm, I'm thinking it could never be done right. I'm just saying. Well, you know I'm anti fry for the most part. But yeah. but the uh, the the those you know the ones I'm talking about you'd get them at like school sometimes too where it's honkers. like this is yeah this is a honker it's like filled with mashed potatoes that have no taste at all to them <laughs> yeah you do wonder how how they got them to have to less taste like taste. TV static <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's bad yeah um yeah so I so I, I oh lame is lame is I sat back in my seat ten minutes in realizing that I'm gonna have to watch these people sing and spit at the screen the whole time I hated every second of it in fact there's nothing more offensive the only thing more offensive than sweet potato fries are musicals <laughs> like so, the, so the, on your hit list we've got sweet potato fries uh-huh. muse all musicals every single one of them every single one uh, anything else does no two, those are two those are championing for? all things that i hate most deeply yeah so I just refuse to believe that she surprised you with it. I know that she told you what it was. I know that I forgot. did not know it was a three and a half hour musical. I would not. I would have. 
wiggle that. Look, I agree that that sucks. I don't like that either. And I'm sorry that people that like musicals. And I'm not, I, I will not even go as far as to say there's not good ones. I'm sure there is. And I don't know all of them because we are uneducated in this department and in many departments. Yeah. But this, but I, so I don't know. I mean, I thought the one that John Mulaney did was funny, but that's just because it's like funny. I'm sure that like the ones that the South Park guys have done, I think were funny. But it's not like, it's not going beyond that. No, me, you know? no. And I can see it surface level being like okay i i can appreciate the wit you know and the tactfulness of it however i i stand by this and we've had this debate on the pod i don't like weird al i don't need novelty in my music i'm not looking for comedy in my music just in the same way this is a whole separate thing like the fact that you lump all these things together is so dumb (laughs) that's a different you're talking about a different thing he doesn't make musicals he makes comedies like parody songs that's a different whole different world oh well i put them one in the same you're just i don't even know how you're getting there other than me saying that there's like comedy Comedy musicals that we probably would think were funny if we heard them yeah i don't think i'm gonna hear them but i'm just saying (laughs) No, no, I, yeah, yeah, fair, fair, fair. I, I, I don't I'm not like Weird Al's either. biggest stand, but I think he's like a nice guy who made funny stuff for me when I was in elementary school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it's for. I, I, I think that the better agreement is that we should land on is that I do not like when adults like things that are for kids. Do you you know definitely I mean? feel that way, yeah. And that's that's what I, I, I think. Do, I, think. I think that's where like the Weird Al thing falls. And if you're an adult who's still like Weird Al rules, it's like no, you liked him when you were a kid, and then now we can let it go. I don't think you should be like in your Subaru Outback listening to a Weird Al song. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you I'm do just, do that alone, I'm just uh, thinking just, of some curly haired kid pulling up in his you know lowered Subaru WRX, and he's got this some. This is so specific. He's got. Some, I should just say <laughs> like this is a guy you knew, and he's listening to Weird Al loud with his window. Three quarters of the who way down. Did, nobody's doing that. That's Someone not a guy. That's not a guy. You made that guy up. <laughs> Nonetheless, I am sorry that you had to watch a musical Hunger Games. It wasn't technically a musical, but this girl was doing way more singing than could have ever been necessary in mm-hmm. a movie where kids are supposed to kill each other because they're poor or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't. I don't get. How it's many, not for me. How many are we in the series now? I don't know. I liked the one that had Jennifer Lawrence and Lenny Kravitz. She's I don't not know in who it else anymore? was in the movie. I just liked when those two were together. That's you know? got to be the first one because I know that. That's one. probably the first there one. Maybe I maybe there's seen like the three of them. Maybe there's more. I feel like yeah. maybe there's more. I've seen the first ones. They are fine. Are there some other series that are in this very you know normie realm that you dig? Because no. I have one. In college, I watched Blade Runner. No. No, sorry. Blade Runner know. is normie. But okay. No, Blade Runner. I haven't seen Blade Runner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. No, the other one is Maze Runner. Do you know that? Why haven't you seen Blade Runner? Either of them? No. The fuck's wrong with you? That's One's like too a, old. That's... The other's too long. Uh, yeah. I, I'm being. I'm being facetious. I'm just kidding. Dumb, right. dumb, dumb, I mean, dumb, 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 dumb. I want you. I want you. Everyone that listens to this, because I know the type of people that follow us on Discord, and they're yeah. definitely Blade Runner fans. Oh, and I yeah, want them to yeah. attack you with knives. I think that I would like Blade Runner. In fact, I'm interested in watching it with Rygo. But uh, I, I, to be honest with you, you I just haven't like taken Blade the time. I haven't taken the time to invest in it. It's anytime I could see myself every, sitting down to every, watch it, will be every like, oh, damn show long. that comes up on Hulu. That's like there's an investigator from Louisiana, and you're like, oh yeah, throw that on. Yeah, it's good. Throw it on. Throw it on. But if you're like, I don't know if I have the time to invest in a Blade Runner, which I believe is like an hour fifty minutes long. <laughs> it's not that big of an investment. <laughs> I mean, bro, I'm, I'm gonna spend more time wrapping up my fourth viewing of Lost with Michan tonight than I will. More than the longest movie you could watch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you like Japan. It has this like weird like you know Neo Tokyo element to it that's very mm. cool. See, I didn't even know it took place and in Japan. It, I mean, I don't know if it does. I don't even. Oh. I don't remember where it takes place, and, and maybe it is, but it's more of just like a. It's it's got the vibe, vibe yeah. of like a yeah like a post apocalyptic Tokyo. Yeah, and uh, it's it it holds up better than in most old movies. Like it's like watching yeah. 2001, where you're like, how the fuck was this film that long ago? Yeah. It looks so good still. Um, the acting and dialogue are really good, unlike Dune. Um, so it's like, you know, you sci-fi e like that, but like the, it's written well. Yeah, it's a big difference between those two. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, you'd, you'd like it. And then there's one with Gosling, and he's good. Yeah, he's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it looks great. So if you like like Dune, you'll definitely like the new Blade Runner because it's got a very similar like big desolate feel. Mm, mm-hmm. And then the old one is just a good movie. Yeah, I need to watch it. I'm into it. How many? How much of the Star Wars series have you seen? Like all of them. Um, you know, I would be able to if you showed me 
a photo of an actor. We'll get or back to Maze Runner, by the way. So that's that, oh. yeah, I will. <laughs> Star Wars. I've seen. I know it at points in my life. The answer is none. I've seen bits and pieces. You've never seen even one of them. Not all the way through. I don't think. No. I I know bits and pieces. If you show me an actor or actress, I could be like, okay, I know. They're in Star Wars, and that'd be about as far as it would go for me. I know, but Star Wars is huge at this point. I feel like every actor has been in Star Wars. That's like being like, find one that wasn't yeah. in a Marvel movie. And at this point, man, I'm not gonna because it's too much of a thing. And they've got like 12 offshoot shows and shit. It's like, now what What even is it? You're not a Star Wars guy. No. No. It's for kids. Yeah. Same thing as always, where it's like, if I was like under 15, cool. There's probably something there for me, but it's not anything. It's, for, it's built for kids. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I like adults I just don't that care. are really into Baby Yoda. Like that bugs me a little bit. You know Baby what I mean? Yoda, yeah. Where you're like, why? Why do you care so much about that that thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's not for you. Yeah, it's for you know. It, okay, let me real quick. I'm gonna wrap up my thought about Maze Runner, and then I want to go on about movies for kids real quick and then i have a, a new story i don't want to get d- too down the road on it because then i get in trouble and okay. i want i want you to get in trouble for <laughs> either way complaining about blade runner maze runner is more or less the same thing as hunger games the same thing as that sh- that movie divergent i've seen it it sucks uh, D- okay. divergent also sucks but i do understand what you're saying in that like sometimes movies that suck are fine yeah on just a, on a sunday i watched that one like mm-hmm. on an afternoon on a sunday or something and i remember being like huh they got me hooked <laughs> i wonder what this little maze leads to you know, <laughs> any if you want to write a movie for that Chase will give a hundred percent to every single time. It's like let there be an air of mystery around one thing that you don't wrap up until the end or ever, yeah. and he will and he'll like it. Yeah, I mean, I started that audio book for the Silo series because I love I love the show so much, and I want to know more about <laughs> <laughs> what's going he's on. Like, <laughs> he asked me that last week. Hey, you, get, you ever into audio books? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And then he's like, I've been re- <laughs> been listening to Silo. <laughs> Which is like, of all things, you picked a movie hey. that a show you've seen and liked, and was like, I need to know the book about that. This is the thing we were talking. I was talking with some Discord guys about about how I like the world that they built. I think the lore you learn as you learn more of you know what the silos, etc. I just like that world. I like that world in the same way I like. Why? Because it's underground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that, that actually is an appeal. Well, the, but I want to say, in terms of silo, you hit the nail on the head. There's a lot of things that this the series has given you little nuggets of that i know nothing about never circled back to maybe to be resolved in the also, future i gotta put it in reverse too you just said that blade the new blade runner is too long and then you i said i think all movies are too long when we were talking about dune you're like no wrong i would have watched four hours of that movie <laughs> so it's like what? the the the, the, the Listen, thing buddy. remains as always the thing that drives me most nuts about you is that you define hard rules on everything and then you break them constantly yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like yeah. just do one or the as, as a true rule person yeah just follow the rules or don't but you can't do both all the time no part of the fun is making the rule it's just happening. so that you can break it for yeah. Maze Runner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's uh let's as we've as we've mentioned, we're trying to uh sort of uh structure structure up the podcast a mm-hmm. little bit so that we don't go on like we could on this yep. topic for one hour and then I look down and I go, ooh, fifty minutes on run times <laughs> and complaining <laughs> and talking about Maze Runner. Yeah. That's not ex- <laughs> we can't yeah. do that. Uh, maybe you like it. So maybe we'll do this and then you're gonna tell us to go back to the other one, which we're fine with, so I don't really care. But let's uh, let's head on over to the news desk, which is where we're going to both bring each other a piece yeah. of news, and then we weigh in on it. I've got something good. Okay, here I can't wait for this. Uh, this is off. This is off uh, the uh, the well known hypebeast.com. Yeah, that's where I get all my fashion news. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually interesting, and I think it's going to spawn a good conversation. Um, I'm just going to read you. I'm just going to read you the title. Tekken director wants to know why fan why fans want Waffle House added to the game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things here. One, what what does Hype Beast report on at this point? You got to wonder because nobody's buying sneakers. It's just sort of it's just sort of anything. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, oh, information about Tekken. Yeah, publish that. Publish that. So that's interesting. Um, <laughs> d- 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 uh, hmm. What do you want me to say here? Because this is a classic you throwing out a topic and then well, looking at me. Here's the thing: is I think it's become it's become modern, you know, lore. Um, God, I'm going on a lore 
Do you're, more. If it's the guy who's never I'm seen Alec. Star Wars. You're really into world building. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I love lore. Uh, it's become part of the DNA of Waffle House that fights happen there mm-hmm. and or wild things. And I have not – I've never been a witness to anything truly wild going down in a Waffle House. But uh, we used to hang out at a Waffle House a lot because it was the one place you could smoke indoors. So we'd, well, we after went there shows, a lot. we would go and smoke cigarettes in there and drink coffee until they were like, "All right, time to move on." Exactly. Going to buy a waffle, and we were not going to. So, yeah. uh, well, I was uh, I was getting everything, but it was by the highway on the way on the way outside of Ashtabula. So if we came into town for a show during college and had to go back to school, or whatever, it was on, it was by the highway. So mm-hmm. it was very common, a very where they easy them. meeting spot, you know. Um, but I've heard a lot of stories about wildness in Waffle House. And I just have to love the idea of this dude who is, uh, this a director of tech, and I don't know if that, you know, but anyway, he's not understanding the cultural reference. And so he put out a, uh, a query to his Twitter <laughs> saying, like, okay, I will only ask once about this request. Why do some communities send me requests for Waffle House? Please be sure to explain the basis for the request, including the original story, history, and background. And it's like, man, he, <laughs> he thinks he's going to get something, like, really eloquent, and it's just, nah. it's just a place where people go to fight and where wild things happen. It's where you go after you've been drinking heavily That's like it. not a That's fun, not a fun drinking a drinking till you black out and then going to waffle house to sober up enough to drive home <laughs> which you shouldn't do either and then and then getting in arguments and disagreements and fighting yeah um two two things come to mind one i love tekken yeah i love tekken, tekken. tekken's great love um, I, I love i love tekken can you rank the fighting games uh i can i would say uh, i can't <laughs> 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 in terms of the three that I consider biggest for me mm-hmm. as a 31 year old, and sure. you, you would identify with the same pool of fighting games. I, we, I, we, I, I'm asking because I'm assuming we're, I would we're say working off the same group Tekken, Soul Calibur, Mortal Kombat. I like Soul Calibur quite yeah, a bit. I, th- I think that I think that mine's the same, except for I'm better at Soul Calibur, so I'd put that number one. But mm-hmm. it's close. I just think the Tekken characters are badass, dude. Definitely. Well, and, and like the graphics the, were always better. Yeah. Oh, so sick. I mean, it's just something about Soul Calibur I really love. Well, Soul Calibur was fun, in every arcade, yeah. so you could you could pick a main, you could pick a main character yeah. to play with, and you could go whoop ass at the mall anytime you wanted. Mm-hmm. That's I, true. I was not good at fighting games, but I was okay at them. Yeah, I could win money off of people pretty good because yeah. i think it was unassu- i was unassuming at it but i could like really yeah tear it up on soul did, did you have a character on any of them that you particularly lean towards and if you don't have one off the top don't worry because I, I don't I need to look at them because i'm not really remembering yeah. and i would i just know it was one of the girls on soul caliber that i always use and i want to say she had like a one of those not a scythe but like something like that i can look this up and figure it out i don't know that it's worth it no it's okay i can't remember anyway i don't don't have any really locked and loaded but there was that one soul soul caliber character uh yoshimitsu he was cool oh yeah and then do you remember vol voldo had like the mummy wraps and would walk on their all fours but with their back like upside down you know what i mean that one yeah Yeah. freaky scary too freaky yeah Soul Calibur was pretty freaky overall, though. Yeah, but anyway, Waffle House. Uh, hopefully, will be m- lamented forever. The second forever thing in I think that I'd like to call for is that, like, I don't, I don't know who invented collabing. Okay, mm-hmm. and I think it's cool in some areas for sure. Like, it makes sense. We don't need it in everything. I do not need another like IHOP and you know K Swiss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I do not need these like two. These are not creative entities that need to get together and work together to build something. This is just using slamming two names together, and I feel like that's people like, well, like, oh, it's like a Waffle House thing. It's like we don't need this. I don't want to. I don't want to be in real places when I play Tekken. I want to be in like weird arenas where you're like, wait, this is where's this at? Yeah, <laughs> in space and time. Yeah, I don't need that. I just I think that things like that need to stop. It's would, I don't like that everything has to be funny. What would you, you know? consider? This is a, this is a, on a more serious note. Obviously, we do collaborations. Sure, I love our collaborations and I stand by them. We have some fun ones cooking up for this year. Sure. I think they're going to be fucking sick. That being said, I also feel that collaborations are overdone in this space of any company that has a multi million dollar marketing budget. They hire a couple kids fresh out of college, mm-hmm. and they say, "Well, all right, all right, cool. So we are, we manufacture wooden spoons for the kitchen, okay? They hire some fucking kid wearing dunks and and 
Fear of God sweatpants or something, right? Young kid. And he goes, oh, well, I think it would be so sick if you wooden spoons for the kitchen collaborated with Gore-Tex. And how cool would it be if if there were grips on the – you know what I'm saying? I'm just putting something together. Anything is a collaboration now. What do you think adds value to collaborations? Because I uh, – let me pose the question. Let me just start there. Because it does – I agree with you. I think – when everything is a collaboration and every big company is piggybacking every big company and it's transparently to cr- crisscross audiences, companies that wouldn't have had any creative overlap whatsoever to begin with, they're strictly doing it because they know they have 12 million people on this email list that doesn't match up with this 65 million, deer, whatever it is. I just think What's that the, deal, like, dude? the unnecessary version is often when it's trying to be funny or create shock value. You're trying to get eyes because of it's weird you know what i mean yeah. like that that i don't think it feels very unnecessary at this point like leave it to supreme because they've been doing it for a long time and at least that shit's cool give me a supreme awning for my fifth wheel trailer to go behind my truck like that's cool i would argue that at least i don't know now but when they were a lot more relevant before i think that what they were doing was saying it, they were making more of like an art statement, kind of like we talked about last time with like Banksy and shit like that. You were making like a statement, you know what I mean, of like, my brand is strong enough that when you put it on icon pieces, and I'm only going to choose, I'm going to anoint what these icon things are, you know what I mean? So I'm going to take the most mm-hmm. iconic of whatever exists. Like they, you know what I mean? If they were, if they were going to do a boat, they're going to do like a Chris Craft or whatever. They're going to do something really iconic, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? What did you like, say about that like you know like a cigarette boat like the wooden top is like the, I'm just thinking of like a really uh, you know iconic type of oh, boat. Okay. I'm just saying like or, or like if they were gonna do a knife collaboration, they're going to do it with uh, Swiss Army knife, and they're gonna put you know what I mean like they're gonna take something that's like iconically known in our lexicon of products like the, the Kleenex of things. You know what I mean because they're you call it Kleenex because of the brand. Mm, I got you. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, I think that they were making a strong branding choice at that point. You know what I mean of saying like we're gonna put it on there and then we can charge whatever we want because that makes it we're taking an icon thing and putting it through our filter and people are gonna want it. Mm-hmm. And I think to a certain extent it really became People will argue with me until, and I don't care, but like, I think it really just came down to, they were like, what can't we do? And now we're going to, now that's going to be the statement mm-hmm. we're making is that I can put this on a brick and you're still going to sell it out. You know what I mean? And then I think, but I also think that that's where things started to get off the rails because I think other brands really started seeing like, oh, look at they're doing it. There's a shock value to it. So yeah. I'm going to make it be like, like you said, like, you know, fucking like how crazy is it that I hop and you know, something, I don't, it doesn't matter. What. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty yeah. are doing a thing together. And you're like, I, I, I know, but like what, that, what value does that add? Yeah, you know what I mean, it doesn't yeah. add any value. What they're trying to do is create a product that sells out extremely quickly and it, and it creates a bunch of buzz and that's it. it, it the, yeah. the, the point is not the product, it is the branding. See, and that sucks because like with our collaborations that we're running, it's like we sell clothes, we're collaborating with clothing brands. We have data and have had conversations and we've the talked word to people is the for problem. years and yeah yeah the, okay yeah, yeah the word is a bit yeah. the problem because what we're doing is we are working we are working collaboratively with a brand to develop a product that has um our brand in mind and their brand in mind and trying to create something original between something the synonymous, two yeah and so that there's a little bit of exclusivity, which is really helpful in the in the market that we exist in, which is very niche and a lot of brands going DTC. It creates something exclusive and it creates something for our fans that are a fan of these other brands because that's how we mm-hmm, exist mm-hmm, is because mm-hmm, of those mm-hmm. other brands. And but what we've but over time we've developed our own brand and our own opinion and our own lexicon and our own vision, and we're trying to do that through the lens of what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a little bit different. And we actually pass ideas back and forth and adjust things. And that yeah. is working collaboratively. Putting a picture of Rick and Morty on a Ziploc bag and saying that's a Ziploc and Rick and Morty club, it's like, no, it's not. That's not anything. Yes, that's just you put that's you smashing you. the two brands together and saying, look at this branding moment. Yeah. And those are two different things. I'm not trying to devalue either, if I'm being honest with you. I think there's two different versions of that thing, and they've both been successfully utilized 100%. At the same time, I think we just gotta like, let's just walk it back a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we not everything needs to be this like. It's just not shock. There's no, there's nothing you could do at this point that would be shocking. What yeah. would be shocking? You know what I mean? There, that, that, and I think that's why there's this like return to like understated things to a certain degree of people. Just all of it feels like an eye roll anymore. We were like, 
would you quit trying to market to me so hard? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I just agree. make a great product and use great branding of your own. And then, you know, you don't need to do this. It kind of like, it also, I think cheapens in a lot of ways, things sometimes. Um, it's not going to stop it. It's going to keep, you know what I mean? It's going to keep, keep going. And I, I don't care, I guess at the end of it, if I'm being honest with you, but at least like, I think those are the, the, the differentiation is that like, Everybody just uses the word collab when it used to like when I when I would describe like what engineer what our brand and engineered garments did was we worked collaboratively to create a product that was exclusive to us. Mm -hmm. So we use some of the elements of branding and things like that, certainly. But like it was definitely more about how fun it was to work together on an item that um, that we got to sell and develop something that felt like us and like them. Yeah. At the same yeah. time and create something original. Any other version of that collab, like we're talking about like Looney Tunes and Target, that's not like, that's not a collaboration that is two brands sh- making products. Yeah, so, and then just know, making it, sure the logos are pres- are visible on both. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like there's any like effort. It just yeah, feels, yeah. Yeah. It just feels like a, a way to like piggyback. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree. I'm not necessarily saying there's anything wrong with that, like I said, either, but it's just definitely like. I just, it's getting a little tired that I'm supposed to, am I supposed to assume that every single product that exists is limited at this point? I mean, for God's sakes, just make products. You mean, and believe in your own brand to make a good enough product to just do that. And I think that honestly, it's probably hurting innovation in my opinion, because it's just kind of the same tired thing over and over and over again. Everyone's trying to use the same brands because that's what will get them this, these I mean, we eyes talked about it this and, morning. You, you got an email. It's like, great. It's just the same handful there, there's definitely there's definitely a handful of brands that, that i believe get overused that are basically collaboration brands mm-hmm. you go to them mm-hmm. and you make a collaboration quote unquote with them and they basically give the same treatment to the thing over and over again and it's like then just make your own stuff you know what yeah, i mean like yeah, just make your yeah. own stuff no i'm with you uh, that's, i agree for me at least that's how i feel so i don't know that like it's not going to stop i don't really think it's like a problem it's just a lot of like it's just getting recycled too often mm-hmm, at this mm-hmm, point. Mm-hmm. It just feels, I don't know. There's more interesting things people could be working on at this point. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. I agree. That being said, we got cool collaborations coming yeah. up, <laughs> but we are working. We're actually like doing something, which is cool. I have a news thing that I saw on the, uh, it was mostly just the way it was said that I'm not sure I love, <laughs> um, in, uh, the New York times. Uh, this is an article about, showing what they call toe cleavage. I don't like this statement at is this, all. Is this in regarding to like wearing like ballet accept- flats or something well, and no, no, showing no, the top like, of your toes? No, that would that actually maybe makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> this is more like uh, footwear with your toes out. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. we've, we've both said we're hog out boys. Yeah, you know what? Two years ago, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it. Last year, it just hit a point where I was like, I'm I'm not playing this game. It's too fucking hot. Where are my Kyotos? I'm having my having my hogs out. I don't do it all the time, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm pro it. But so, what's this article th- saying? Basically, like what's acceptable in the workplace. You know what I mean? And that's mm. that's. I mean, look, we. I don't know how much we can really weigh in because neither of us have worked too much in a workspace where we couldn't do what we. This is where we to come do. to work, but it's less of a capital W workplace when you think of workplace. Yeah. And I would, and we're, we work in fashion, fashion so you know, what you, you want. yeah, we'll do whatever you want. But, um, um, but yeah, it's it is it is a it's a funny thing to have to think about. I mean, I do, I actually thought of it more of as like an interesting thing to bring up because I feel like a lot of people that I talk to are like very anxious about wearing like a sandal in general, mm-hmm. and I wondered what your thoughts on that were because we we always say, I mean, like you said, we I've been doing like Kyoto's or sandals and stuff like that for a long time because I just don't care. I think that at a certain point in the summer, if you've got like a cool pair of flowy pants and like some sort of open toe sandal, I think it can be done. I think you got to address a couple of things, guys, specifically, uh, just because they're a little worse about it overall, is go get your shit fixed up. You know what I mean? If you're going to do this, you got to clip those nails. You got to push those cuticle back. You got to take care of the feet a little bit. You can't have, you can't be running, you know, big old calluses and bunions off uh, off of yeah, the open toe. Yeah, Let, let's yeah. be mindful yeah kind of beach body style you yeah, know yeah but you can you can prep those up and then and then do your thing and i don't i, I i'm into it man i i it feels good i feel like it, it allows me to like wear something like heavier elsewhere because you get a little more air throughout the mm-hmm, the, the mm-hmm, outfit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't bug me I, i'm do I'm you pro. are you pro it for a workplace 
Say say in What's an, it matter, in an dude? office. You g- give me. I mean, at this point, what is a workplace? I think well, that's what I don't people care need to start. One way or you know another, what I mean? I people got to start asking themselves, what is this at a certain point? Yeah. You know I mean, obviously, people can't be sloppy, and I understand that. Like giving people like rules is tough. You know what I mean? Because you're like, there's going to be one ding dong that ruins this, you know, one bad apple situation where, you know, somebody wears a pair of like old Oakley thongs and you're like, okay, obviously not what we meant. We need to have be, you know, we need to look at a certain level of elevated so that we can convey professionalism. I think that's all good. But beyond that, I mean, if you're going to go get a nice pair of Birkenstocks, I mean, there's a lot of cool, there's that brand. I always forget the, not it's not called Jockaboos, but it's called Jock something, and they do great mm-hmm. like open toed sandals. I oh, think Jock, that, yeah, or, yeah. I don't I can't yeah. think of what it is, but uh, people know. And uh, you know, like we have that great pair of La Mer sandals. They usually do something nice with an open mm-hmm, toe. Mm-hmm. I think like if you're doing it at a certain level of elevation and and considering it, it should be good. I I I think in workplace you should be like, listen, I don't like what you're wearing because this is goofy. You know what I mean? Obviously, I shouldn't have to say that this is not elevated to a certain point, but I feel like that's the reason why it can't be probably done in in those situations because yeah. you have some person that like has known stinky feet be running it, and you're like, okay, like obviously, why do you got to push the limits? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think that if you can do it in an elevated, sophisticated way, like like there are plenty of options in the sandal world for that type of thing. Do your thing. I think it's cool. Yeah, who cares, man? I don't know why people get so hung up on like the toes being out thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like with the outfit. I don't. I think, like I said, you have to like, cr- you know, course correct your outfit to like make that thing look good. Yeah. But that's obviously doable. So. Yeah, I. Yeah, I people don't. Get really I don't hung really. Up on it, though. I I think part of the issue though too is that, like you said with with it it probably falls back on the guys is like I can think of a bunch of dudes who work in an office. Who their most most of what their uniform is is like a pair of khaki pants, a free event t shirt they got when they when their company collaborated with a brewery nearby or yeah, something. Yeah, and, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And then a pair of you know nondescript Nike shoes from Finish Line, which again are all totally fine. But uh, there'd be no care taken for these fellas. It would just be their fucking hairy ass feet in some Oakley. Yeah, sandals. And now you're like, guys, uh, you know, how do I explain to you that this right. isn't there's a, right? There's 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 a way to do it tastefully. Yeah. I think that if your your business is a group of people that you're like, I don't think they're gonna, I don't think they're gonna get it. Then yeah. fine, call the rule. I get yeah. it. You know what I mean? It, yeah. You know? Yeah. But I don't know. I think that like, I also wonder sometimes like, who are these workplaces even hosting? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who's there that's seeing them? Yeah. So what, I, I know, I know. It's I don't know. I, I'm not in a people an authority half to talk work on. from home, half work in the office. You only go in certain days. Hard, it's, it's so much weird shit anymore. I hardly don't know. anyone we know, either here in Boulder on Discord, who works from home, they're not going into the office more than once a week, if even. You know what I mean? I mean, Michelle goes in once a week, if even. The dream scenario is that everyone that you work with or hire can just be an adult who understands that we have to do work so that we get paid and and the way we get paid is the company makes more money and then we get paid and that's kind of how it works. And so we're all going to come here and try to like push along things the best we can. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then everyone just comes in and acts that way. And I would also love a scenario where it's like, hey, if you can get your work done faster and then you want to go home, I don't care. As long as the work gets done what do I care where you're at? What are you doing? You know yeah, what I mean? What's yeah. it matter? Just get it, make it happen. Is it going to do, is it going to further the company? Yeah. Put us in a better I position? I mean, look, I'm still pro, like, I'm not like, you know, old guys rule or anything, but like, I'm still pro, like people getting together and like chopping it up now and then, because I do think you can have like, if a problem arises and y'all work on it together, I think you're going to solve that problem a lot Absolutely. faster than just spinning on it at home. Well, we've you know? seen that firsthand here. Yeah. I mean, that definitely is a thing. Um, it's also that's a specific type of business. Not every business really runs that like that way. So yeah. I don't know. I think this is a very individual thing. So I don't know why we're on to work from home now. But this, but I, but the uh, I, I understand that like the challenge is there. But I also think that like I like. I'm gonna also stand on that. I like the look of an open toed sandal guy or girl. I think it's a cool look. Yeah, it's dope. Can be dope. If done right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Does that does that, yeah, that that's fair. answer a question I didn't yeah. ask? Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to listener calls. Hey, this is fun too. So, like, let's get some. We've got a. We've got a little grip of submissions. Yeah, not a, not a boatload, but let's send more. Tell them why. Why pull this up where they can do that? Yeah. So you are obviously just if you would like and you can't find the link, obviously shoot me an email or DM me in Discord. Uh, however, 
These are readily available. It's through SpeakPipe. If you go to the customer service podcast link tree, which I drop in every announcement in Discord, it is in the bio on our Instagram. If you type in customer service podcast link tree, it'll be there. Anyway, it's there. It's uh, I think it's titled Talk Your Shit or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, it's readily available. So go drop us a message. You don't need to download an app. You can just go and talk into your computer for a minute. Or a phone or whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, here we go. New listener question. Here we go. All right. Hey, um, I would love to hear y'all talk about thrifting, some thrifting tips, um, especially like not high-end vintage stores, but truly like the savers in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is where I'm calling from. Um, what are What is your advice? Is it even worth it to go to something that low end? I don't know. I'm looking for like workwear or like old t-shirts, good t-shirts, stuff like that. But just generally, I feel like y'all probably have interesting thoughts on thrifting strategies. So, um, yeah, I'm curious about it. Thanks. All right, cool. Cool. So thanks again for submitting these. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Um, So here we go. I think this is probably one a little bit more for me than you, but you probably know a little bit about it. No, it definitely is. I mean, for me, the the type of person that I am and how I consume and or purchase things are uh, rarely is it that I find it and I happen upon it and I like it and I buy it. I'm obsessing about it for a long time. So if I am in that situation, I'm looking for something specifically. I so rarely thrift. But if I am, if I'm in a place that has thrift, you know, what would you, thrift store or vintage mm, store yeah. or whatever uh i'm open to it but mm-hmm. i don't have any i don't have any tips tricks or pointers i am mostly just an observer now and we are pretty because we'll be in tokyo in a week so we, we are very it, excited to do some vintage yeah, shopping totally. there because it's a it's a lot more curated there than we really yeah. find it here especially i mean if you live in new york or la there's definitely like curated spots but they also tend to jack the prices i mean at this point every single guy has a you know, uh, Instagram yeah. where Resale he business. sells T-shirts for six hundred dollars that say like, "I went to Miami last week." You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's like yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I, it's definitely a it's a weird market these days for sure. It's not the like gold mine it used to be if you were willing to do the work, especially in person. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have some couple different pieces of advice. Number one, and Chase kind of had it right away, is that. Use eBay, but you just need to know what you're looking for. You can't oh, just you've be talked like, about this, yeah. yeah, you can't just be like, you're not going to stumble into things. It's so much stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it's endless, endless listings. But if you're going like, I'm looking for like a distressed blue Oxford, I'd like it to be Ralph Lauren, but if it's not, that's okay. Know your measurements is the other thing. Like, yeah. Find a, find a couple shirts that fit you well. Find a couple jackets that fit you well. Pants, the same thing. And just measure them out and then keep them in a notepad on your phone. You know what I mean? You're like, all right, so I know that like I can wear... I'm good as long as it's like a waist that is this and a rise that's this yeah. length I can take care of, this other stuff I can take. But those are the two things that are like imperative yeah. for those yeah. to fit me correctly. So anything you can do with eBay to like narrow down further... If you're looking for vintage tees, for example, what are you looking for? Just Then I would just go in and go, all right, let's go vintage T-shirts, 1980s, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of, and I want them, let's say I want it to be like 1980s sports themed or something. Mm-hmm. Like, put that in and then get rid of like, go, here's my size. I'm going to only wear this. If it's vintage, I'd always say size up because it's been washed down. If it, yeah, uh, an XL yeah. fits like a large, you know what I mean? And then... Um, Again, if you know your measurements, it doesn't matter. And then just start narrowing it down in the in the refining, like refine it by color. Like I don't really want to see anything that's like pink or purple, maybe, but I want to see black and gray. Cause yeah. That's what I'm looking for. So you look only these. So you're just trying to like narrow it down. You can narrow it down by price. It's going to get rid of even more options. You're just trying to narrow it down until there's like 500, because that's reasonable to sit there and scroll through until you find something you like. Mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. So knowing what you're after and keeping kind of a list of that is really if you're going to use eBay which is predominantly what I use uh is that's when I'm like looking for something specific yep. not just browsing so I think that that's a really good way to start is like if you're going to do it online just be very specific so come up with an inspiration look around for inspo online and then go oh cool I want this but I can't afford like a visvum coverall but I bet I could find a vintage like off white coverall somewhere yeah, like yeah. when I'm you know and so you can so that's doable um 
locally, that's obviously tougher. I'd say if you can find estate sales, that's that's often for clothes when people are just trying to get rid of stuff instead of like usually you'd go for furniture. But I usually tend to find like kind of cool pieces. Hmm. Um, but you can't like there's not going to be sizing options. You're going to have like only one person lived in that house. Yeah, blah blah blah. Yeah. So you're not going to you know it, those are a little more challenging. But I do tend to find the best deals in those scenarios, and that's just a look them up online and get up early. You know what I mean? That's just all yeah. there is to it. And you just know that like. You should go and just do it for fun because it's something to do, and maybe you'll pop off on something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as far as locally, I'm I'm not opposed to going to those spots because you will find like cool stuff. I'd yeah. say a couple things to look out for. If you live in a town that's more like industrial, look for places near where they do real work, and you might find old workwear that Absolutely. people have donated. So like that's like that's an easy one. Same thing where if you have like if you've got a college town anywhere close. Go to the college town because there's a bunch of kids moving, grooving clothing all over the place, and you tend to get a lot of people that are moving out quick, so they just dump it's a bunch get rid of stuff. Of my shit, yeah, um, that's a good, you know. Or you know, if you're like, let's say you're in a town that's close to like a bigger city, or maybe like like a more wealthy city, go over there because people toss stuff that they don't know what it is. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's like another little kind of strategy you can do is just bop around a little bit. I mean. And when we were in Chicago, we used to go up to Wisconsin a lot. Um, they had decent vintage stores. They had, um, you got a lot of mix of like college people, working class. You got a lot of like, you know, sports fans. So yeah, like, you yeah. could find a lot of that stuff by the type of people that live in the area. Yeah. So again, if you're being a little bit more specific with what you're looking for, that's going to really help you like narrow things down. Um, so that's, that's kind of like how I've always done things. So. I don't know. I mean, like you can, go, but I would still. I mean, I think that what you have to do is like enjoy the 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 process of like looking for stuff and don't buy stuff you don't need. So you just go like, oh yeah, I'm looking. You know, I'd like I'd like some old work where maybe I want a couple car hearts. It'd be cool to have a couple pairs of the pants, a couple jackets. I'll go look for those, and then just kind of like it's the same thing. It's like in real life, you're narrowing down that search and you're going to go, okay, these two are you know up nearby where they do some industrial work. I, I wonder if I can find some old yeah. workwear through yeah. there. And then you just go peruse, man. I mean, that's just what, I mean, you should just enjoy that. Like, that's the whole point is that you might come up on something. It's the reason people don't do the work is because it takes a while. Yeah. But see, that's why I, that's why it doesn't If it's your hobby, me. then it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're out and about. Go get yeah. yourself a little coffee. Yeah. Mill around a yeah, vintage great. shop for a little while and see what you got. I mean, Goodwill, there's all sorts of those things. But I mean, I, I, I think also a lot of people, this is the other thing you can do that I learned in Chicago from hardcore guys. Um, and remember that people in any city are hardcore about this stuff. So look up or call and ask when they get new deliveries for, and, from, when, for and when what? they get them on the floor. So if you, if you got any good, place, any place, if you get a goodwill in town, just call them and say, Hey, when do you guys take new deliveries? And when approximately would it be on the floor? And that like, I know in Chicago, the the big one that was really hard to thrift from because it, the, the, there were there was guys in there at five a.m. on yeah. or waiting outside it on Wednesday mornings. That's when they would like put out the new stuff. That means it had been sorted and was ready to go on the floor, and they'd start merching it in that morning, and then people would go in there and check it out. So Crazy. knowing when that stuff is, I mean, it's just like you have to follow. It's got to be a hobby. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just kind of have to like follow it. If you really want to like come up, like that's how people are coming up on stuff. Yeah, the people who come up on shit, who get those crazy deals. Are there regularly? Enjoy doing it. Yeah, they don't see it as a, a failure if they leave with nothing. You know what I mean? Like I used to work when I first moved to Boulder with this kid uh, named Charlie, and he was always coming up on shit. He bought a pair. He got a pair of Cordovan, uh, you know, number eight. Uh, what's the olden? The olden. Shit. Oh yeah, uh, indie boot. The indie boot. Yeah, yeah. like a like a pair yeah. of Cordovan. Indie boots for like a hundred and ten dollars or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Flipped them, made well, a couple Well, and that's the thing. Like, I'm also telling you, like, for all this time that I did it, I mean, other than like flipping some stuff in Wisconsin, like, I, the come ups are like here and there, you mm -hmm. know, throughout the years. I mean, it's not all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you just got to go and like enjoy looking around. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any other like little like tips or tricks you can really do. But I mean, those are the ones. Call the places and let them know when you get like figure out when they get new deliveries. Because that's the thing. If you end up going on the off cycle and you're like, you know, it's all the dead inventory, then you're not seeing yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. And then kind of figuring out like what people do in the area that you're checking, and then like be willing to drive a couple hours to go check out a spot. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. When Michelle and I went down to Santa Fe, it, funny enough, it was literally on the weekend that COVID popped off. I think I called you guys, being like, oh, yeah. if you guys could pick up some extra shit at the grocery store. We're, we're picking up stuff here but yeah. it's already empty um 
somebody had told us like yeah you know there's there's obviously all of like the vintage stores that are known known and approved yeah down down downtown but they're like a lot of the ranchers were going offload their shit into this one in particular down the street you should go check it out yeah i mean half the half the thing was just like worn ass levi's you know what i mean there's also like communities online on reddit and on instagram and stuff like this where you can like connect with people and like talk it out and like talk Mm -hmm. about you know figure out where some of the spots are in your area like because i think there's a lot of that kind of thing that you don't know where it's at because it's not always just like thrift store Mm -hmm, it might mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. like a donations type of place or whatever yeah yeah. she's got to like look in and figure out like where it gets stuff through the pipeline might not even necessarily be a place where you could walk in and donate shit but they get stuff yeah Yeah. we used to have kind of like a little like uh, we lived next to a place where there was two furniture in chicago there's two furniture places we would check in on and then a and then a small thrift store just down the road we would just hit those three like every weekend yeah. just as like a, we'd go get a coffee hit those three places before we did something Boom. else because you never know you know what i mean and like and in one case i got like a made in japan uh a boot of a of a eames chair like in, oh, in perfect condition Beautiful. you know what i mean and uh, so we got that and used it for years. I mean, and like, you know, that was like a, and the guy was like, I don't know what the price of that's new. I just, I, somebody literally just dropped it off and he was like, I think he sold it to us for like 200 bucks. Sick. So it's like, you know, it, you just got to, it's a lot of right place, right time, you know, waiting it out, checking on places regularly. Yeah. It's a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I really recommend, m- vast majority of my shopping is just eBay, but I check it every single day. I have a lot of saved searches. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And then I just like hunt it. You yeah. know what I mean? And you just, do it all the time. Also, I'd recommend um, Facebook Marketplace. I've gotten into that recently in my old age. Uh, is like really age. good. Like uh, it's it's random, but if you're if you're checking it regularly, I see people like being like, "Hey, I've got like." I, I'm always looking for like old electronics and stuff, but like it'll just be like a person has a garage full of a bunch of clothes and they're like, hey, we're just trying to get rid of this stuff. It's like, you know, starts at a dollar, goes up from yeah. there. And like you can just go like check out someone's like warehouse or storage space mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. and go through it. So I'd also check on there a lot. And then, you know, a lot of people are like listing all this stuff. They're charging too much for it. Just ask for what it's worth. You know what I mean? So yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to like haggle a bit depending on what you're, you know what I mean? Just be like, Hey, I'm trying to get these five items for this. And they're generally like, who cares? Go for it. Because what, yeah. what, yeah. Especially yeah. if it's someone like an estate sale or something. Yeah. They're, they're going to run it for the, till tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. The and whatever's thing, not left over is getting donated. So just, Ask. If you're good at it too, and you can like because you have a you have a computer in your pocket that you can pull out, like if you go out there and you find like an old like you know I've I've wound up with a couple like old Gucci pieces and stuff for like you know 100 bucks, and I'm like I just look it up online real quick and go, can I sell this for 200 pretty easily, you know? And you're like, cool, I'll just take this and I'll flip it, and I just made 100 bucks, you know what I mean? So I'm doing out there yeah. doing the work, make a little like a little slush fund for yeah, your yeah, yeah. for your vintage shopping. So yeah, I mean that's that those are all the things I do at least. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I want I want to hit some estate sales. Michelle caught some uh, really cool shit last year in way of like garden supplies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just she just passed it on a whim coming home for some. But I I would love to go look for some furniture and mm-hmm. knickknacks for around the house and stuff like that. It's the same. You just got to remember people are out there doing it. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? So mm-hmm. you just got to like get up early and do the thing. You yeah. know what I mean? But you just make it a thing. I was like, that's what I'm doing on the way. And the nice thing is you go out there 5 a.m., you look around someone's house, which is kind of interesting to do anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe you come up with something, maybe you don't, but you got a coffee out of the deal and you're home by 10. You know what I mean? Easy. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, <laughs> pretty good weekend activity. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move into the final thing. Give us a give us a little delivery update. What's going on at the shop All since right. the last time we talked to him on Thursday? On Thursday. So um we got this morning i believe the only new deliveries would be this morning so we got the rest of our east log for spring summer 24 cool so that should be online relatively soon yeah yeah, relatively soon uh we got a couple boxes of solomon's which i will have online as well here in not so long and then a box of samuel zelig um got pants a couple camp shirts a couple tees so yeah so we're good we're rounding out our offerings i know that coming down the pipeline rototo should be here in the relative near future mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i'm i've got all the documents ready to import that so as soon as you're ready brando i'll get that stateside um i think that's it in terms of things that are inbound right oh we did by the way we did restock the margin cleanser oh yeah that's up online so now. if yep. uh, you haven't already Real. Did, we, did we get stuff on Friday? I mean, here's the. Th- I mean, I'm just thinking like Howlin is new and online. Oh, Howlin, Howlin. I that was a little was early. earlier. Yeah. Uh, needles up online. Oh yeah, yeah, but that was a little earlier as well. Shout out those fucking seven cuts. The yeah, garment so dead sick. ones are so good. Yeah, yeah, they're you really, the really good. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, we've said a million fucking times, but I'm not as big or as broad as I look. But when you put me in something, I can't believe that I can't fit an XL in the needle flannel. Even Abby was like, what the fuck is going on? Comes down to the middle of my forearms. So... When you look good in clothes, you look good. And when you look goofy, you look goofy. It's just, a, you know, just, <laughs> some things work. God doesn't give so. with both hands, pal. But anyway, somebody should cop them. Uh, I, think, really I think good. they're really yeah. sick. I'm uh, like a normal XL. They fit me fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're yeah. Com- no, it, com- it, it, like comfortable, good. loose, and great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you would you have to pay. You can, and just so you know, you can play the, you can, you can play the game with us. If you want to buy one and then exchange it, we got enough sizes to play that mm-hmm, game. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? So, mm-hmm. so you can keep trying a couple different ones. Um, it's 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 a good selection. The garment dyed ones are really the that's a standout for me. Yeah. I mean, you still get the classic look of the regular seven cuts, but the garment dyed ones are yeah. Because I like at. the uneven silhouette. Yeah. How kind of some of the mm-hmm. some of the strips will you know hang longer than the yeah, others, yeah, etc. Yeah. But um, those those over dyed are so sick. Yeah, there's also some those those balloon pants are also going flying off the shelf. See, so. I've been thinking about I'm I'm selling off some pants, selling off some stuff, making some money for Japan. And I'm thinking, do I need a pair of those needle pants? I might try them on this week. They yeah, might be cool. too big for me. We'll see. Too big? Maybe huh? not though. I think they're fine. They're, they're going to be big regardless. But the way they lay is the yeah yeah the deal. All right. I'm trying to think of anything else that was fun that came in. We got some like Solomon's that that have people mm-hmm, I know mm-hmm. people been looking out looking out for. Uh, is there anything else that you're that you're getting ready to get get over here? That's kind of it for right this minute. Um, it'll, it'll there's still a little bit left for for the for this season, but you know we're getting into the here and there, and then doing some restocks mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, do we want to give everybody a taste of the new brand that we're gonna have come in this spring? Well, I don't know which one you're talking about. From Korea. Okay, I don't care. I mean, it's fine. It's not ready yet. But it's not it's, ready yet. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, come, yeah, yeah. Just so people can kind of think about it it's, that, it. it's that brand uniform bridge sure and out of they, korea yeah and they've got like a core selection they have like a seasonal collection and they have like an off brand that will also include called like albert explorer albert explorer yeah, yeah. Think, so i'm not honestly, sure like what all lands when to be yeah. honest with you but i think we get some of the core stuff relatively for spring yeah really, what, really cool. what drew us to this brand is the lookbook is purple label more or less yeah it, it really just the silhouettes and shit is just like very similar it's post gorp Still yeah. got some active wear. Still got some tech, not, not elements, but yeah, tech not elements ish, yeah. but not terribly so. I'm I'm just really stoked for that brand in particular. So I can't it's like, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that I mean, some of that should be soon. I don't know when exactly, but it, yep. we should. We, we'll see that before the end of this um, season. Uh, it is the first of April. So if you haven't joined the Patreon yet, or you are part of the Patreon, I released a newsletter to the Patreon this morning. If you haven't joined yet, there are a lot of stuff. Happening this, this for our good. Patreon we got, members, we got this a couple month. good ones in here, and we've, we've got, got we'll have like the Tokyo vlog will go in Tokyo, there. Tokyo vlog, and then the pods will do as well. We'll still do the pods for yep. for everybody. But we'll have the vlog will only be there, and that'll be original content, not just a video version. And same thing, what we do for everything else, and we still have the video pod that's going in there tomorrow. I think it, it's all in addition to yeah. everything for Japan is in addition to the regularly scheduled, scheduled yeah. programming. Uh, we're gonna have a twenty percent off site wide uh, flash sale. Yeah. Um, just a way to throw some love and got a bunch of cool shit. And I think everybody will really enjoy having that day. So I'll give you a day. I'll give you a day's notice in advance, but we're not going to run it for a week. It's going to be probably a day, mm-hmm. 24 hours. Um, 15% off of site or sent on site wide. Mm-hmm. So now's the time you, you got, you got your spring dates coming up and you need to smell fresh. You like scent. What have you? We've got a lot. We got a CDG perfume restock not long ago. What's what sense are you doing right now? Because we did a little. We did. A I little, just we did a little personal order for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing. I've, I've, I'm running between five right now. I'm really loving CDG Eau de Parfum or however you say it. the OG, the classic, just the standard little. It's like gold, you know. Mm-hmm. Love that. So I'm doing that. I have from the incense collection Wars is eight. It's orange. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe it's supposed to replicate uh, the smell of like the desert outside of Jerusalem, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Uh, so it's nice and woody and spicy. Uh, I'm doing Mira Mira Setti or Mira Chetti from Aesop. Mm-hmm. Michelle got it for me a couple years ago. It's a very green, very lush. So mm-hmm. like when it's like nice out, I, I really like it. When it's like a nice spring day, um, I've been I've been messing with Yoyogi a little bit. Mm-hmm. The from the uh, what is it? The collaboration, the, the four, monocle. the monocle series, and um, oh, and then I, I recently I had a bottle of you know that scent company Blackbird, yeah, they have that scent Ophir that I really love, O H O P H I R, and uh, the bottle was all fucked up and I couldn't get it to spritz. 
Miss Shan bought me a little decanter, so I recently transferred it over and is now usable again. So th- that's kind of what I'm rocking with. What are you doing? Well, I think we both have this one too, actually. The, I have the ganja. Oh, ganja's from, da- dope too, yeah. Yeah, it's a really, I, it's funny because it's like, I love the smell in the bottle. Mm-hmm. When I first spray it, I'm like, mm, I don't know. And then after it's been on me for a little bit, I'm like, love it. Really? You know what I mean? Okay, so cool. I, and I really like Comme de Garcon perfumes in that way because they're like one of the few that like, they, it's like they age. They ebb and yeah, flow. Yeah, 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 yeah for I really sure. like that. So that's been a fun one to do now and then. I like the, we have Hinoki and Yoyogi. Mm-hmm, those mm-hmm. are both great. Stellar. Yeah. Uh, both of those are good because they're kind of like, they're deep and interesting, but they're also like not hard to wear at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not like crazy. Yeah. I have Wander Wood. Yep. And I like that a lot. That's more of like a, if I dress up kind of scent. Yeah. You know, it's a little darker. Yeah. Um, a little more cologne at least a little bit more than CDG normally does. I have Blue Santal, which I really love. Really good. I love that one. I love Santal anything, though, great. to be honest with you. And um, we have a couple other random ones that I like. I, I like, I, I keep, like, I've told you I paid way too much money for that old Mark Jacobs scent. Yeah. The, the yeah. original Mark Jacobs men scent yeah. that they don't make anymore. So I paid, like, a fortune for it to, just to try to, like, relive my youth. Yeah. So I have that one that I'll work in now and then. I the one I'm out of right now that I that I really think is one of my top scents of all time uh, is the Tam Dao from uh, Diptyque. I yeah. love Tam Dao, and again, I think it's a little bit of like a lot of like the cool kids I hung out with in Chicago at, when I was in my 20s wore Tam Dao, and I think that's just sort of like you in just my associate head now. With being cool, yeah. And I just like the it just was like a certain time, and I, like it's really ingrained in my head. So I really mm-hmm. like to have that one on deck. I need to buy a new one. Um, and I feel like what else do we have? I know we do have a – we use a couple different – what's the one, the the popular one? Why can't I think of it? It's out of New York. Or I think it's out of New York. Le Labo. Le Labo. We have yeah. a couple of those. I forget mm-hmm. what we have at this point. But. I think you guys have another 13, right? Y- well, we have, 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 have – every once in a while we'll buy the sampler just so we have like a gang okay, of them yeah. that we can try again to see if we want to try something new. Um, another 13, yeah, I do use that one. Um, I have from Le Labo, I have Noir. And that 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 one that is nice that one too, stands yeah. as my favorite wintertime scent. Yeah. It is. I like the stellar. patchouli from them also. It's like kind just of straight a up sweet. Patchouli, yeah. It's yeah. N- it's like not. There's more going on. Than yeah, just, no, I yeah, but yeah. it's but I like that one a lot too. And then Abby always just keeps amber oil around, mm-hmm. and I really like doing a little bit of amber oil and then spraying something. Yeah, it kind of like warms everything up. So yeah. that's like a that's kind of like my lineup. I'd say nice. Yeah. Do you have any scents from like for instance, my mom bought me this Guess cologne. Scent? You're talking about like a you're talking about like a like a Walgreens scent. Like yeah, like from from the yeah. mall or something. Yeah. She bought me a guess one that I, sure. I could I could picture the bottle. It was metal on top and bottom, had like a greenish tinge glass on the inside. I don't know. I just have such a fond memory of it being fucking really good. And I had that all through college. That was like my I had like a Tommy Hilfiger one, I think. Sick. I mean, but the main one I had was the blue Ralph Lauren because I thought it was cool because that's what my grandpa had. Yeah. And it was like very much an old man smell kind of, but it also is kind of like a classic cologne. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it smells like a, you know, nicer steakhouse. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, like, I feel you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I do kind of like that. Um, I don't think that, I don't think it was until I started working at Canoe Club that I realized it's Tommy Hilfiger and not Tommy Hilfinger. That seems right for you. So... I also, I mean, mine was sort of the Marc Jacobs one. That was to be same, honest with yeah. you. Like, I had that. That's pretty, what reminded me. I thought he was cool back when he wouldn't really make that much men's clothes. Like, it was just like a, a young, like you know, because he's been doing doing stuff since the '90s. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like when I started getting into fashion, capital F fashion, he was very popular, especially yeah. with younger people. And he did that men's one, and that was like, it was cool at the time to have it. And I it like saved up to get it, you know. And then my mom got it for me for Christmas one year. And uh, I used that like almost all the way through high school. Has it changed the one you have now? Does it still smell it, how you remember? It, a little bit, but it's also like I can tell it's probably died in yeah, the thing because sure. it's you know you can't they don't make it they haven't made it in years yeah. so you know it it's it's died a little bit and yeah. I don't know if there's bringing it back to life I don't know that much about it but I, I still get a hint of it it's enough to like. You know, because sometimes you'll have a, you know, it was, I think we've talked about this before, the smell is like really tied to memory. And sometimes Boom. you'll smell something like, geez, Louise, I've really like. That's my grandma's uh, yeah. crawl in pantry where I'd get the bugles from. Yeah. In fact, there's a little, there's a little bar of hand soap that I use and it's from a company that I'm not going to be able to come up with. They sell it on Essence. I can't remember what it's called. Um, 
and it smells so much like my grandma's house, like growing up, because she was very into like putting soap bars and like mm-hmm. nicer soap bars in like her sweater drawer to make them smell good. Oh, for stuff. real? Yeah, sick. And uh, and and I and I keep it. It's like a little like you know a little puck of mm-hmm. of uh, soap that I use as hand soap, and I use that one all the time just because I like it. It's like yeah, a quick. Yeah. It's not what I want to smell like necessarily, but I like getting a little quick hit of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Yeah. Scent is very fun. I could see on an unlimited budget, I could see myself getting out of hand. On oh, it's really fun. Yeah. I want to smell them all. I, I think it's like the thing that we get most excited for when it delivers. When they come in, oh, come here, come here, we have a new yeah. one. And so we'll go over to this yeah. corner of the studio, spray it a bunch, then we have to go to the other one to spray it a bunch. And uh-huh. Yeah. I want to throw out a recommendation because one of the guys we talked well, about. Well, I use it. Chronic too. I forgot to mention that. Oh, Chronic is good. I really like that. In in light of Chronic, if you'd like a green scent, like Chronic or, or like Amazing Green or like yeah. Wonderwood even to an extent, uh, CDG, we have Calamus. It's in the yeah, really Olfactory nice. Library yeah. collection. And that Calamus, directly defined, I believe, is just when you take green leaves and you squish them together in your hands, all that liquid that comes out is Calamus. Like that's, and it straight up smells like if you just blended a bunch of fresh leaves together. Mm-hmm. It's really. It's really, and Straight sometimes cream. stuff like that is cool when you can be like, I want to get a hit of that and a hit of something else. Yeah. Simple, so you can kind of blend your own yeah, through brands. Like it's that's fun. like a fun way to do that. Like that's that if I owned that one, I would do that and like maybe mix it with yeah. like Chronic, and I, I think agree. it'd smell yeah. good together. You know, as like two different things. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, it's fun, and then you can like look at them, and I have like day and night scents or yeah. things that I do when it's like certain. Yeah, the packaging's pretty. You get to yeah. have them on a nice little space. Mm-hmm. It's your little. We have a little setup where all of ours are on the top of this little bookshelf mm-hmm. and every morning I putz around and reorganize them and pick one and it's mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. It's a fun thing to get to. Well, anyway, if you join the Patreon, you get 15% off those. Yeah, things. anyway, 15% off sent all, all, all month. Uh, join Patreon and uh, that's that's about, that's about it. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Uh, you know, do all the things we told you to do because it's cool and uh, we will see you again on Thursday with a guest, with a really good guest Oh, it's deeply sad that we had to yeah. do what we had to do, but we this in 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 one instance in however many hundreds of episodes we've now done, we had a file issue and the the files got screwed up. Gone. Got lost. So shout out Zoom. Um, they uh, yeah. So we had to redo this. We're gonna redo this episode, but this is this. It'll still be special because oh, it's still gonna be I've good. talked to this man hundreds of times in my life, and it's interesting every single I time. I have. So. If you're in the Discord, you have as well. So yeah. So you've you've probably all interacted with them that are listening. So this is it'll be a fun one. Yeah. And then we got an even we got a really we got a good one this week. That yeah. It's, we've been trying to get him on for a while. We think he's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's really gonna. Yeah. Without I, spoiling anything for all the yeah. hardcore heads out there. Yeah. You're gonna if you like went to a show one. at some point in your life where you had a buddy that was in the hardcore scene. You're gonna like this. Yeah. Guy. So yeah, it'll probably shut out as many people we just invited in there. But I, but it, it'll be a really yeah. fun one. And then obviously the week after that we will have our um, Tokyo dispatches. So yeah, the Tokyo dispatch. Yeah. So Ooh. we're gonna we're gonna try to do 30 minutes a day, and then we'll tidy them all up together, and then yeah. make it like a part one, part two sort of situation. So I know people have always said they like those episodes. So we're kind of gonna keep those going. Yep. All right. Well, pleasure talking to you as always. Let's uh, let's take off for today, and we got cool stuff coming. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, See right. you. Guys.